الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبئوني يحببكم الله الآية صدق الله مولانا العظيم وقال أيضا في مقام آخر وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة واركعوا مع الراكعين صدق الله مولانا العظيم والصلاة والسلام على النبي المختار وآله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله بدي فضل الله سبحانه وتعالى and the blessings of Nabi Kareem alayhi salawatu wa taslim. It's an honor to be standing before yourselves in this very auspicious and very beautiful gathering. And not only words, but wholeheartedly I'm thankful to our honorable Fadil to Shaykh, our Shaykh Osama, uh, who has blessed us in uh, today's gathering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him more courage to carry out the work of deen that he is doing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend his special barakat and blessing upon him and family inshallah my honorable brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his divine kalam by saying قُلْ O my beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you say inform them let them know Ya Allah, what is it that they should be informed of? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inform them that in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, if you desire to love Allah Rabbul Azza Jalla wa'ala, if you want to love Allah Kareem Jalla Shanuhu, in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, fattabi'uni, then follow me, yani, he is telling Rasulullah to announce that they should follow the Rasul to find the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, when we love the best of creation, Rasulullah what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yuhbibkum Allah. Then surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. Then surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast a, cast a sight of love and affection upon you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you and make you from his beloved. Just imagine how beautiful it would be that we be from those whom are the beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whom are loved by Allah Karim Jalla Shanu. Whom have attained the qurb, the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what was the reason for me to mention this? Somebody must be thinking, there are two topics today. One is Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj and the second is pray for Al-Quds and Palestine. But what has it got to do with the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Let me tell you, nothing is complete yani everything is incomplete if we do not have the true love for the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying ati allah wa ati rasul wa qul al amri minkum that follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and follow those who command over yourself so the love for the love for Allah, love for Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is utmost important in our life. But when I say this, I also mention very crystal clear that the love of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam should not only be lip service. We should not only pronounce, or we should not only announce, or we should not only say, "Ya Rasulullah, we love you," but our actions do not speak for us. Have you heard of this action speak more louder than the words? Huh? 
Our, we should not say ourselves that we are the lovers of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are the servants of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We are the Muslimin. We are the Mu'mineen. No. Our actions, our rightful actions should speak up for us. Now come to the point. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions in His Divine Kalam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Wa aqimu salah Establish your prayers. Ulama have translated this to establishing the prayers. Not praying. Because they're two different things. One can pray just to offload the burden. You know, let me do it. I have to do it. That kind of prayer is not accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are praying to offload the burden, but when you are establishing prayer, yani when you are praying with love and affection, when you want to pray, it's not that somebody is forcing you to do so. You want to do it. You want to pray. You know that the best of creation, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, has told me and you that we should pray to Allah rabbul azza jalla wa ala, as we are seeing Allah Kareem And if our Iman is not to that level that we could see Allah Rabbul Azza Jalla wa Ala, our creator, our sustainer, our nourisher, our cherisher, then at least it should be in our mind and heart that Allah is watching us. If our level is not to that, that we could see Allah, let me ask you a question. Can Allah see us? Huh? Indeed. Without any doubt. For sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see us. So when we are praying to Allah Rabbul Azza Jalla wa Ala, we are praying wholeheartedly with this intention, with this iman, with this belief that Allah is watching us. But let me tell you something else. The night of ascension, for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in the Qur'an, be it the first few ayat of Surah An-Najm, or be it the first ayah which gives us a great and beautiful belief about Al-Mi'raj, Al-Asra Al-Mi'raj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhan al-lazhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. You know, on the night of ascension, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was bestowing his rahmah and blessings and barakat, and when it was said, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawat wa tayyibat, As-salamu alayka, ayyuhan nabi. May peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you, O the beloved of Allah. And just to clarify, what was said? Ayyuhan Nabi. al ishara taqfilillah. It was said, Assalamu alaik. May peace and blessings be upon you. Ayyuhan Nabi. O oh my Nabi, O oh the Nabi, O oh the Prophet. Assalamu Then, what did the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh Allah, you're sending blessings upon me. You're descending your special barakat and blessings upon me. But what a beautiful it would be that it should be assalamu alayna. May the blessings be upon me as well as my ummah as well. I want you to understand that even to that lifetime opportunity, that no one else had. Only the Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He did not forget his ummah. He did not forget his ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his return. Yani on the return of Rasulullah alayhi salawatu wa taslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a gift. Now this is I need your attention on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a gift. And Shaykh, you know when my wife gives me, if Allah gives me a wife once again in life, inshallah, 
Huh? Or if my child gives me a gift, if my parents give me a gift, if a friend of mine and a best buddy of mine, and you know, best friend and a childhood friend, or you know, imam, or anyone that I have great amount of love and respect for, if they give me a gift, we take care of it, yes? We take good care of it. We tell everyone, you know, my friend gave me a gift. You know, this friend of mine, Sister Amina, you know, this brother of mine, this friend of mine, Brother Kamran, Brother Shahzad, Brother this and that, they gave me a gift. It was my anniversary, it was my birthday, it was, you know, a special occasion for me, they gave me a gift. So not only that we take care of it, we inform others as well. But whomsoever is gifting us in this dunya, we are informing people about it, but they are fellow Muslims, or fellow colleagues, or fellow human beings like me and you. What about the gift given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a gift, and that is a prayer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this prayer, a pass. So we could meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we could have the opportunity to be found standing in the call of Allah, bowing down to Allah Rabbul Izzah Jalla wa Ala, worshipping Allah Kareem Jalla Shama. And just look at this gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only gives us this gift, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Mu'azzin that five times a day make sure, remind them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his rahmah and blessings upon them. And that was not one time gift given by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever you perform your salah, Allah gives you barakah. So it's ongoing gift of Allah Rabbul Izza Jalla wa ala. Then what has it got to do with the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Now that the gift has been bestowed upon us, and Allah is giving us hukum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to pray. How many of us do we pray? If we have to catch a fly, we wake up early in the morning and we make sure we are at the airport 90 minutes before if it's a domestic fly, and you know, three hours before if it's an international fly. And if a person like me who has too much doubt, so make sure he's there four hours before. So he gets a good seat. We plan everything. We make sure that, you know, we don't miss the flight. But has he ever come to mind that we make sure we don't miss our salah? We don't miss the opportunity to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, miss, we, we don't miss the opportunity to be found in the court of Allah kareem jalla shanuhu. It's just that you need to know how much of a great blessing it is to be found in the court of Allah. Tell me, how happy would you be if the Prime Minister of the country sends you an invite and he says, you know, Brother Kamran, I, wanna, I want you to come see me. I don't know if he's going to go or not, but he wanted him to come see me. How happy would he be you know, Prime Minister of the country called me out of hundreds and thousands of people. He called me. I'm something. But that's just an example. That's dunya. Allah Rabbul Izzah Jalla wa'ala, the creator of entire creation, wants us to be found in his court so he can bless us, so he can send his blessings upon us. How many of us do we pray? How many of us do we find ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of us do we make sure that we pray? We've got time for anything and everything, but not to respect the gift of Allah. Why didn't you pray Fajr? Oh, I, could not, I, I could not get up. Why didn't you pray your Zohar? Oh, my boss did not give me time. Oh, I, you know, and if you want to go for lunch, or if you want to go for a meeting, or if you want to go link up with someone, you make sure you get an hour. And you don't even have 10-15 minutes to pray to Allah Rabbul Izzah 
Why you not pray the Asr? Why, why you not pray the Maghrib? Why you not pray the Isha? I was tired. Whole day, eight hours, ten hours I work. And after that I'm tired. I can't pray. But I have time for anything and everything. But I do not have time to stand in the court of that sustainer of mine. That arousing of mine. God is giving me risk. And it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Christian is still there. What has he got to do with the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You know what the best of creation, Janabi Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, As-salatu qurratu ayn. That this salah, this prayer, is coolness to my eyes. It's coolness for my eyes. Yani when I see my ummah praying, when I see them in my court, when I see them praying to Allah Rabbul Izzah Jalla wa'ala, I get happy. That they are respecting the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is given to them. That is gifted to them. And then Rasulullah alayhi salawatu wa taslim, another hadith comes to mind. But before I mention that hadith, I want to give you an example. If there's a house, Okay, and the, or any building, if there's any building, and the foundation of that building is not strong. Can I ask you a question? Is it not possible that the building can collapse any time? Please tell me. Yes? If the foundation of a building is not strong, then for sure, the building can collapse anytime. And whoever, whatever company has constructed that building, definitely will be sued. No, you can't work. When you understand that the foundation of the building has to be strong for it not to collapse, now understand the hadith of Rasulullah Bila Tashbitamseel. Rasulullah alayhi salawatu wa taslim says, Buni al-Islamu ala khams, shahadatu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa ikam al-sala. That the bunyad, the foundation of al-Islam is upon five, and from the five, one of the pillars, one of the strong foundations is al-salah, is the prayer. And you know when wholeheartedly with love and affection you are praying to Allah Rabbul Izzah Jalla wa'ala when you are praying to Allah Kareem Jalla Shanuhu you'll see that this prayer this standing in the court of Allah this bowing down this ruku this, this sujood will take you away from any wrong that you are doing even if you are making any intention of doing any wrong. Prayer is very important. Prayer should be a very important part in our life. We should never be missing any prayers. Because it is a pass for us to be found in the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is for us to show our love and our service to Allah Kareem Jalla Shanahu. It's an honor to welcome our honorable guest, Fadilatul Shaykh, uh, Al Shaykh Al Imam Muhammad Sulaiman. Uh, MashaAllah, on behalf of the management, on behalf of myself and every one of you, I say welcome to our honorable guest, Al Shaykh Al Imam Muhammad Sulaiman. MashaAllah, Allahumma Ameen. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. It's an honor of having our honorable guest as Sheikh Muhammad Sulaiman as well. Inshallah, I'll tell you something very important about the Sheikh uh, before, Inshallah, the Sheikh comes to speak. But just, I want to finish it off here. What did I say last? Prayer should be an important part in our life. Because we are standing in the court of Allah Kareem Jalla Shan, who our sustainer, our nourisher, our cherisher, 
And it is a form of thanking, doing shukr to Allah Rabbul Azza Jalla wa Ala, that, oh Allah, we are so busy in the dunya, we are, you know, going, uh, we've got our own businesses, we've got our own jobs, we're doing this and we're doing that. But still, you have granted us the opportunity to stand in front of your court, in front of yourself, so we can show our love to you and you can send blessings upon us. But look at this, when you're praying alone, you get the reward of 10 prayers for the one that you are performing. Even more than that? Less than that? How less is it? Bole na? Ji? Nine? Ji? You get reward of one prayer? But where's that 50 gone then? The 50 that you were bestowed upon, and then you were said that you are left with five, but you'll be rewarded for 50. So if, you, if my math is right, and you're performing Fajr, don't you get the reward of 10? Huh? Say Subhanallah. MashaAllah. But chalo, even if you get one, when you are performing with Jama'ah, with congregation, how much rewards do you get? 27? Confirm? You, you need to confirm because sometimes I forget it because of my illiteracy. But 27. When you are performing with congregation, with jama'ah, I have three ulama seated here. Fadilatul Shaykh Al-Imam Sulaiman, Shaykh Osama, and our Honorable Shaykh Kamran. When you are performing, I want to mention something very important. When you are performing prayer with congregation, you get the reward of 27 prayers. This congregation is anyway. If this jama'ah, is done, for example, you have a musalla, a dedicated place and space in your house or in your, at, at your workplace. And you know, every day it's time for duhur, it's time for asr. And one of you are the imam and the rest of the Muslims that are there, they are performing prayer. The reward you get, Sheikh, is 27. Yes? And when you are performing in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward is multiplied more. Why? Not only the 27 prayers of the jama'ah that you got, the congregation prayer that you have performed, now because you have come to the house of Allah, to the masjid, you get more rewards. And a bonus from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So prayer should be a very important part in our life. Because it is the foundation, because it is the pillar of our Iman and Islam, because it is coolness to the eyes of our best of creation, Rasulullah But even more than that, it is a gift of Allah Rabbul Izza Jalla wa Ala. And I mention this as a pass from Allah Rabbul Izza Jalla wa Ala for us to be found in the court of Allah Kareem Jalla Shah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our presence here and grant us the opportunity to act upon whatever has been said.